You know, normally I like to start these videos with a joke, but given the content involved, I've been advised against monkeying around. In today's humble opinion, we're starving some primates in Do Not Feed the Monkeys. For the moment, let's ignore the twisted implications this game puts forth as the engine powering its core concept in order to address a pretty significant and overlooked element. This game doesn't have any monkeys. I know this must come across as a disappointment for all of you capuchin or howler fanatics out there, and I apologize, though to be fair, looking even slightly into this game would have shown you that. I mean, none of them have a tail. They're clearly apes. I'd have tried reaching out to the developers to correct this little snafu before the publishing date, but the shadow organization I joined forbade direct contact, so... What can you do? Besides, maybe that's why no one seems to get punished for feeding them, despite the name. Do Not Feed the Monkeys is a survival horror game dressed up and paraded around as a black comedy. By which, of course, I mean dark humor as opposed to Medea's family reunion. In this case, the laughter it generates is used to mask the haunting paranoia broiling in your bowels that communicates that you're being watched at all times. Allow me to put your mind at ease. You are. But don't worry, the NSA doesn't make any espionage commitments to you personally. That's why they're called No Strings Attached. It kind of just wants to fuck you. And honestly, which government agency doesn't? The Friendly Body Inspector? The Nude Association of Sexy Adults? The Cocks and Asses? It's pretty much all the government is. Speaking of what things are, the premise of this little venture into the mind of an older male sibling is that you have joined a secret organization interested strictly in observing other people. You control Big Brother, who spends day after day in his room, staring at a computer screen, struggling to meet his daily needs, and begrudgingly going to work so he can continue to satiate his inclination for voyeurism. Given that you're watching my content, it must run in the family. It's alright though, you could have a far more detrimental hobby like pornography or spiritual self-flagellation in the form of creating YouTube videos, despite the fact that no one seems particularly interested in watching them. Luckily, some of us are capable of multitasking. Given that you can actually beat the game without interacting with the cameras and all, the main objective is to manage your resources. Which honestly isn't that difficult if you lead a healthy life of doing normal things like going to work, earning a paycheck, sleeping, eating, paying rent. But that's boring, and you wouldn't own a game about secretly watching people on cameras if you weren't going to secretly watch people on cameras. So the more pervasive, albeit technically secondary, elements are observing your monkeys as their lives and their four stories unfold, making note of critical information, and trying to piece together the mysteries within them. Or if the mysteries aren't interesting enough, you can always help a young woman relapse into alcoholism or inspire a certain genocidal dictator to rekindle his passion for, uh, purity. Of course, in order to do so, something like that, you would need to not only take notes, but utilize those notes in order to break one of the most fundamental rules of your organization. <coughs> Do not feed the monkeys. Luckily, there appears to be no repercussions for such behavior, so, you know, go wild. Figure out the details of your monkeys' lives, talk down their personal information, and occasionally talk to them directly. Manipulate their families and delivery drivers. Kill a man, I don't care. Granted, being an awful piece of shit isn't your only option. You can also choose to save people who find themselves in precarious situations, supposing uh, you're, you know, fast enough. And you're not the only one who can play the stalking game. Sometimes it's a supposedly inanimate doll doing the stalking. Fun, fun, fun. Do Not Feed the Monkeys isn't a perfect game, but it is the sort of game I'd prefer to see funded as a humble monthly original. It's experimental, but good god is it interesting and well executed. It's also the perfect contrast to all of the feel-good, politically correct nonsense that games seem to be dishing out nowadays. The writing is dark in equal parts nonsensical and cynical, and despite giving a slight positive slant towards socialism and a somewhat dubious representation of what looks to be a characterization of our country's most beloved president, it doesn't shy away from making a black woman functionally illiterate. If me pointing that out is problematic, fuck you personally for making me notice things like that at all. It's for those reasons that I give Do Not Feed the Monkeys an 8 out of 10. One of the things I most like about it is the fact that everything in the game contributes to a story, and full stories can't be experienced on a single playthrough. You receive a newspaper daily that typically serves as a little more than flavor text. There are tons of websites for options that yield no useful results, but reward you with interesting tidbits nonetheless. Some cages have have branching paths based on how you handle them and offer different rewards, not to mention the variance in dialogue. In short, despite having a relatively limited amount of content, it manages to distribute that content throughout various playthroughs, none of which will turn out quite the same as the last. This is especially true if you factor in the learning curve of timing your work, sleep, and grocery store visits with times in which your monkeys are most active, and learning which cages warrant your particular interest and which cages are completely meaningless. The developers even go so far as to throw in red herrings to distract you from your ultimate goal whatever that may be. It's really a clever mind game. 
especially as the cameras start piling up. Thank you everyone for watching, and special thanks to Fixurama Studios for bringing us the pleasure that was Do Not Feed the Monkeys. It felt like playing an anthology of short stories that changed based on what you wanted to see, and your decisions really mattered, unlike you know, most other storytelling games. It was dark, depressing, and hilarious, and I'd say it kind of made me want to kill my parents, but I'm pretty sure no one would understand that that was a subliminal message found on a glitched camera if you watched it long enough, so I'll instead have to meta-reference it with a lengthy explanation of the joke. Until next time, remember that failure is not the worst case scenario, so go on with your bad selves and stay awesome.